Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question was Frederick How do I become a better front-end developer? And since it's 2019 I assume for this year, so let's get into it. Well you know, It depends kind of on where you are, but so hopefully well at, at least I hope that this will make most of you a better front-end developer today because all I can kind of give you is the same sort of tip that I've I think I made a video about this last year as well, but I think it's still true today. And we'll see if you agree. So I will make the argument that the first and foremost thing that is an issue for pretty much every single front-end project we have today is the sustainability of the project itself. In other words, it is not what framework you're using, it's not how you load your CSS, so how accessible your application is, none of that is the main issue of front-end today. The main problem is that it has become unmaintainable. It has become this weird mess of different practices, different libraries, different paradigms, and different ways of working, like basically just a big, big, big mess, which kind of is in the hands of some junior profile front-end developer who is responsible for just maintaining that mess that you all got yourself into. And this is like a self-fulfilling prophecy. It just keeps on happening. I've seen it's without exclusion. I have never ever seen a JavaScript pro like a project where this is not it hasn't happened. It it is uh, it, it it's just baffling to me how we can get to this point over and over and over and every company gets to the same situation which is varying degree of legacy of course but it always happens so as a front-end developer I will argue that the main challenge that you face in order to be a better front-end developer is to actually figure out how to make a project sustainable over time because nobody seems to be able to do it yet it's such a simple thing and it's been simple from for pretty much always it's uh, at least in my opinion because I have my own like personal profiles that I look up to and they seem to be doing this just fine the people who develop the most of the libraries that we look at when we add our own dependencies they have solved this so many times and yet somehow whenever I see a company trying to do it it seems almost impossible but I will give you a few tips. So the first and foremost thing I think that you should really have a think about is to really ask yourself, do I need this? Do I really need this library? Is this library somehow going to give me some type of value? And most of the time your answer to that question should be no. It shouldn't, it, and it doesn't matter which library, like which framework slash library, whatever you want to call it, that you pick. It doesn't matter if it's Angular, React, Vue, whichever you pick. Like the problems that we used to have in front end was the complexity of state management and creating a complicated SPA application. That is no longer the pro a problem. It's been solved for a few for quite a few years now. Now the problem is how do I scale such an application to a really big size with m multiple people adding code into the project. Now I will argue that the way that a lot of people go about this is without any type of structure plan, they don't have any idea of basically what they're doing. There are no, they don't have any guides or rules to kind of follow when they do this. So they add a bunch of different libraries and hey, one person over there thinks that this library is kind of cool. So they add that in and that's, uh, then of course another person be, gets inspired by that and adds in some functional practices and somebody over here uses CSS modules and then the third person kind of a fourth person comes in and says hey you know what we should do CSS in JS and so they add in that and they try to start that practice it just becomes a big fucking mess and I'm so so frustrated when I see it because it's so easy to prevent all of this by simply having the mindset that it's more important that the project say, stays sustainable. And it can't be sustainable if every, two, every person comes in with a new idea of how to do, do the work. I don't care. I, I, I don't care how amazing your library is unless it is truly necessary to have that specific thing and do things in the way that you're suggesting it to sustain the project. It doesn't have much value. 
It just, it doesn't. All of these different libraries that people are excited about, most of them feel no practical value. They're just a hype or they're just a way of doing something that you could do without having that library, without much in terms of consequences. The goal should be to use only the bare bone amount of code, like the boilerplate code, in order to sustain your project. The rest should be browser native code, because the less code you ship, the better for you. So that's the first thing. The second thing is to really, really, really learn how to master CSS, like really get good at designing CSS and designing standard components. Because one of the main things, apart from like if we, from JavaScript issue where people, as I said, they kind of just create legacy from adding all of these convenient libraries and they just add more stuff than they actually need, is the misuse of CSS. You see the dangerous part when people use CSS these days, and it's been the same problem since forever, is that they will create a component, especially if they try to create like standard components or anything like that. I don't know how many times I've seen people try to create a grid system or a layout system or just a standard system for this that has completely failed every single time. And I argue that this, this happens for the same reason why you have multiple versions of a tooltip or a dialogue or whatever. And that is because they simply don't know. They, over, they overcomplicate their own situation. They believe that they have a good understanding of how to design a very well-structured standard component. And they, and they go in, and it doesn't even have to be a standard component, it can be any component. They go in and they code in some CSS with some basic understanding of how to use CSS. And six months later, or maybe just a few weeks later, somebody else comes in with a new feature requirement that they need to add in. And because of the decisions that have been made beforehand with the current layout of the CSS, they now face a choice. And that choice is, it's the worst thing. I, I get almost angry every time I get into this position where I now try, I try to add to this component, whatever it is, it doesn't, it, the worst part if it's the standard component, then I really get upset because it's not a standard component if my, I need to hack it in order to get, to, to get it to work in my use case. And then I sit there and I realize that now I have a choice. Either I have to rewrite the CSS that this person who was before me made or I just have to override their rules. And maybe the first time this works, and then I do that, and then the next person comes along and has to do the same thing. And then the next person, and then the next person. And that's how you get legacy CSS guys. This is exactly, it's a snowball effect. If you make really bad decisions within CSS up front, like when you first start out, and you create a situation where you limit the ability of another person who wants to add to that CSS, you get to into, you put that person in a situation where they either have to redo everything that you did, and if your component is complicated and big enough, they will never ever redo it because it will always, and that's the problem with CSS, because you can fix it, it's almost always going to end up with people just hacking it together or adding worse CSS on top of your CSS to just make their use case work without having to redo your work plus their own work. So really getting good at CSS and really understanding how to create not just a thing that looks correctly, but a thing that abides by the best rules and practices within CSS that can become truly extensible and just is going to not, you know, it's not going to get in the way of the next person who comes around is one of the best ways for you to become a better front end developer. Because trust me, people, I, I, I even senior people, like seen, so called senior front end developers, I see they do, they, they do this all the time. And in my world, it's not a sen you're not a senior if you cause a situation where your work becomes legacy for the next story. So what I want you to take away from this is that in my world, if you want to be a better front-end developer, the first thing is to get really good at just using the standard APIs of the browser and really figuring out the bare bone minimum of libraries that you need in order to achieve the goal of your company or your project without having all of these like unnecessary libraries because these things start to pile up and become legacy very, very quickly. 
The second thing that I think that you should have a look at is to really, really get good at good CSS architecture and creating good components or just basically writing proper scalable CSS because most of the time people fuck that up. And the worst part about that is that if you ever fuck up CSS, it's very likely that it will just keep on getting worse. So you should really, really respect that knowledge, like the, CSS, the knowledge of CSS enough to really think it through and get it right on the first try because odds are otherwise that you will cause a problem down the line. Have a great day.